Hello friend, welcome to the Java puzzle. Today we are going to continue the Java multi-threading class and in this part of this video we are going to discuss about the synchronizing the thread with synchronized keyword. In our previous video we have seen the method join, slave and yield with their behavior. Now it's time to look at how the thread can be synchronized to access the shared data. In Java, shared data simply mean another object that contains some data for the thread to function. For example, the instance of type counter. But in the first place, why there is a need for synchronizing the thread to access the object, the shared data? So let's imagine a common scenario of displaying the number of hits of a particular website on the UI. The backend server need to maintain a counter that keep track of the number of hits. And for every request, there is a request handler that run in a specific thread that need to access the counter object and call increment on it. So let's look at this example counter demo where we have a two thread T1 and T2 accessing the same counter object right accessing the same counter object each thread is incrementing the counter one lakh time right at the end of both thread completing their execution the expected output should be two lakh because each thread perform one lakh increments so in this example you can easily see that we have created a task incremented task increment task which is from line number 22 to line number 26 that increment the counter one lakh time and we have created two thread each performing the increment task so at the end of this program we should expect the final value of counter to be two lakh but run it multiple time and see the output so let me run this program so this time you will see we have the output is 1,42,645 which is not our expectation right if I will run this program again and you will see this time we receive 1,22,492 and if I will run again third time and this time you will see we receive 1,31,237 so you can see I have got three different results and none of output has shown me the result of 2 lakh the place where thing goes sideways is increment method where we just plus plus here so this code region in our example in this example you will see this is a single statement in most of the problem it is a multiple statement right but in our case in our example it's only the single statement so this lead to race condition thought the statement plus plus value appeared to be a single statement in the java file when the code is compiled the single statement turned out to be multiple bytecode. We can clearly see this if we can extract the bytecode of this counter class. So here, how you can do this? So let me open this project and go inside the explorer. Let me open the CMD and Java C counter demo dot java i compiled that class now i want to see the bytecode of this class so i will use java p hyphen c and counter dot class so if i will run this and you will see this is the output so this is the bytecode of the class counter Look at this public void increment. There is a six byte code instruction that represent the method body which contain the single Java statement plus plus value. So let's look at this byte code. So first one is the a load underscore zero. This is a load reference from the local variable and the underscore zero is the index of local variable array in the current frame of the stack. 
or you can say the current running thread then second one is a dupe dupe is a duplicate the value onto the operand stack then we have a get filled this is used for to fetch filled from the object which is probably to this reference to this here then we have a i const underscore one this is used to push the int constant with the value one to operand stack then we have a i add this is a pop two int value from the operand stack and add them then we have a put field so this is used for the set the field in the object and reference with the this so for ease of our explanation let's classify the above byte code in into three operations first one is a read operation and in the read operation we have a a load dupe and get filled then we have a increment operation which contain the i const and i add then we have a write operation which contain the put field so in a sense the single java statement plus plus value is converted into three operation when it goes to jvm for execution this is where thing go out of order in the sense of multi threading one thing you should note that there are a lot of optimization done by the jet compilation and jvm at the runtime like reordering of instruction we will look at this this part in our later section but for now we will only look at the concept of out of ordering from the perspective of multi threading right so the thing to remember is the single java statement plus plus value become three operation when it arrive at the jvm for execution and these three operation are getting executed by two thread t1 and t2 let's come back to the program and here t1 and t2 right it interleaving the jvm randomly at any of these three operation we will look at the two scenario one of the happy scenario and other with some inconsistency so in the case of happy scenario all the three operation are executed by t1 sequentially without getting disturbed by any other thread then t2 come and execute the three operation in the sequence undisturbed by the other thread let's say the current value of variable is 10 the expectation is that when t1 and t2 complete their operation the counter value must be 12 so let's see in the example t1 and t2 execution sequence in the happy path so t1 read the value which is 10 then t1 increment its 11 still it in a local stack then t1 write back to the value 11 then t2 read the value which is 11 because t1 has written the value that is incremented then t2 increment it 12 and still in it local stack then t2 write back the value which is 12 in the counter object so this is a happy path now let's look at the scenario where it lead to inconsistent result now assume the value of counter is 12 and when the t1 and t2 complete their operation the final counter value should be 14 so the t1 read the value which is 12 and t1 increment it 13 and still in it local stack and t2 preempted t2 now read the value which is 12 because t1 has not written the value that is incremented so t1 increment it 13 is still in its local stack and t1 preempted so t1 write back the value 13 because that is the result that t1 has it on stack and t2 preempted so t2 write back the value 13 because that is the result that t2 has it in on stack so the final value is 13 but expected is 14 this is the scenario that we have seen specifying from the beginning to be out of order and lead to inconsistent result so now i hope you understand the problem know that we are also aware that the happy path give us 
consistent result so they are kind of solution first somehow instruct the jvm to run that the thread are always with the order man mentioned in the happy path there are again two way to do this first one is using synchronized keyword second one is the using the class return lock which come under the java.util.concurrent.lock library so second using the atomic class that use the compare and swap construct we will park return lock and atomic class for later now we will only look at the synchronized keyword so there are two way to using the synchronized keyword first to use it with the method in method signature so what changes i have to do for this i have to just add synchronized keyword here synchronized and if i will run this so this time you will see the value is 2 lakh now expected value is we are, we get here but and second to use the synchronize as a block so second thing is to remove here and just use synchronized and if i will run again this time also we will receive the expected value out of these two synchronized block provide the flexibility of guarding the code at a finer granular level we can put whatever statement that we think to result in inconsistency in the synchronized block rather than making the whole method synchronize so this is the only beginning in a later video we will deep dive into synchronize keyword where we look at the byte code and understand what is happening in the jvm so this is the time for the summary so in jvm the order of thread is not guaranteed it's all depend on the jvm thread schedule when there are two or more thread accessing the shared data it may lead to incons inconsistent result because of the fact that these thread race on each other to execute a particular block of code this lead to race condition there are two way we can in instruct jvm to execute a particular block of code without interference first one is a synchronized and the second one is a return lock synchronize can be used with method and code block it provide more flexibility with the block of code as we can deal with the finer granular level thank you for this video stay tuned for our next video thank you